Hello, and welcome to this general chemistry video lesson. My name is Dr. David Kreller. I'm a chemistry professor at Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. Today's video lesson is going to be about some basic concepts in chemical bonding. Let's start this introduction by making sure it's clear to everyone exactly what we mean when we use the word chemical bond. So we'll use this, uh, actually I guess it's a, it's, a, it's a phrase, chemical bond, it's two words there. We use these words, chemical bond, to talk about the phenomenon of atoms sticking together. Say if we have two atoms that are going to enter into a chemical bond. Before they were bonding, they were behaving as independent atoms, not connected. But if atoms bond, it's because that they have strong electrical attractions between them. Because of their strong attractions, they don't behave independently anymore. They stick to one another, and rather than having independent units, independent atoms have sort of a new thing formed based on this group behavior of these atoms sticking together. And so exactly what you have when the atoms stick together, it depends. When atoms stick together, that's when you get your molecules, that's when you get your compounds, etc. Really when it comes down to it, all matter in the universe, all the matter that we're familiar with, normal matter, it's made up of atoms and it's very, very interesting because most of the atoms in the periodic table stick strongly to other atoms. So when we're talking about chemical bonding, we're really talking about the phenomenon of atoms sticking strongly together. Well, there's three major types of chemical bonds, and we define these types of chemical bonds in terms of what the electrons involved in the bonding are doing. In each case, even though there's three kinds of bonding, in each case, really, we're talking about the same thing, atoms coming together under the force of some attractions. In each type of bonding, it's very important to understand that it's the valence electrons that are involved in the bonding. The outermost electrons in the atoms, not the inner or core electrons. It's the valence electrons. Anyway, these three types of bonds differ in terms of what the valence electrons end up doing. So the first type of bonding, type of bonding that we'll discuss is ionic bonding. So now remember, to understand a certain type of bonding, we will watch and see what the valence electrons are doing. In ionic bonding, you really always have a metal coming together and interacting with a non-metal. Here the metal is sodium. And metals have the property that they have very low first ionization energies. And so they lose electrons relatively easily. And oh, it's a beautiful matchup between a metal and a nonmetal because the nonmetal actually has a relatively strong tendency to gain electrons as measured by the electron affinities. Metal loses an electron because it has low ionization energy, and the, the nonmetal picks up the electron because it has a large negative ion electron affinity. And now, the metal, having lost the electron, turns into a positively charged ion. And the nonmetal, here the chlorine atom, turns into a negatively charged ion as it gains the electron. And well, this is a match made in heaven really because a positively charged object falls in love with a negatively charged object. They're oppositely charged, they have strong electrical interactions between them, and they all pile in and snuggle up close to one another. And if you have lots and lots of positively charged and negatively charged ions, they kind of aggregate together in the form of a nice crystal, which has a beautiful packing arrangement. Basically, you'll see that in a crystal of an ionic solid, the positively charged ions are surrounded by negatively charged ions. And the negatively charged ions are surrounded by positively charged ions. 
and the system of oppositely charged ions will adopt some packing arrangement that is the most stable arrangement for those ions. It will be the lowest in potential energy. Okay, so that's ionic bonding. And in ionic bonding, there's a transfer of electrons, which turns atoms into ions, and then there's attraction of those ions. Okay, second class of bonding that we'll look at is called covalent bonding. And now we pointed out at the beginning that in each case, we need to think about what the valence electrons are doing. Well, here, this chlorine atom and this bromine atom are going to come together and share electrons. It might help us to think about the drawing a, a Lewis electron dot symbol for each of these. Chlorine has one unshared electron in its valence shell. as does bromine. And so they'll actually come together and have this covalent bond which in which they share electrons. And so this line is drawn to represent a shared pair of electrons. And so here there has not been any transfer of electrons between these atoms. You know, it's not like chlorine has given an electron to bromine, you know, and formed ions. When these atoms come together to share electrons, these electrons are really primarily located now in the internuclear region. Neither of these atoms has become electrically charged due to this covalent interactions. So in the ionic bonding example, positively and negatively charged ions form and they were attracted to each other and because of these strong electrical attractions they piled into the nice crystal but here you know you have an a molecule that basically is electrically neutral and so it's really going to have negligible attractions to the other molecules that are that are electrically neutral and so unlike here where the ions pack into a crystal most often solid at room temperature, these molecules, because of their very weak attractions to each other, don't, uh, don't interact strongly with each other and hence tend to exist in the form of gas. Okay, so electrons are shared and also we'll describe the bonding here in terms using this word. We'll talk about the electrons, referring to them as localized. Again, they really exist primarily in the internuclear region and nowhere else. Like this material wouldn't conduct electricity. These electrons aren't really moving around. They're really so-called localized in this internuclear region. So anyway, we had here covalent bonding occurring when you have a non-metal interacting with a non-metal. So this is the third major classification of bonding. Metallic bonding. So as the name might uh, suggest to you, this type of bonding arises when you have a metal interacting with a metal. And actually in this case, it's a, it's a simple example where all the atoms are of the same type. They're all, from, they're all sodium metal. And now, actually if we're going to draw a Lewis, structure or Lewis electron um, symbol for sodiums you know there's one unshared valence electron and uh, so they're bonding on the basis of sharing electrons and so basically we're looking at a crystal of sodium atoms that have all come together and this is a lower potential energy form for them they come together they stick together because they're able to share electrons. And the electrons hold, hold this whole thing together, you could say. But um, in this electric, um, electron sharing situation, not only is there electron sharing between the sodiums that are side by side, there's actually electron sharing all over the crystal. So you could think that, say, this sodium atom 
is actually sharing electrons with this sodium atom way over here and this sodium atom way over there. So there's electron sharing, but now the electrons don't exist in one particular spot like they did in the purely covalent bonding. Here in the metallic, metallic bonding, those electrons get to exist all over the crystal. And this is often described as a general sea of electrons. And so this type of bonding is described in terms of those valence electrons being shared again but also being delocalized kind of the opposite of what's happening here in terms of where they, the location of the electrons here they're localized they're really only exist in one specific spot here they're delocalized they move all throughout the crystal we're going to continue our video lesson by spending some time talking in a little more detail about these classes of bonds.